All right, uh, welcome back everyone. This is section three of unit five on lasso. So let's just um, recap where we were. We started this unit with an example of trying to predict housing prices on this very great data set. And after a bunch of cleanup and scaling, um, we got to the point where we had 174 predictors for each housing price. And then when we applied ridge regression, or actually basically um, linear regression with a little bit of conditioning, um, what we got, we got a reasonable solution, but it was hard to tell of all these 174 features, which ones were important and which ones were not important. Then we stepped away from the example and developed this theory or discussed this theory about regularization. And now I want to come back to the demo and try to apply those techniques. So what we talked about was the technique of lasso regression. And if you recall from section two, in lasso regression, we try to minimize the mean squared error like we do in any linear estimation problems but we have an additional term which tries, which is called the regularizer, and it tries to promote sparsity in the solution, meaning that it will try to find solutions which do not use too many non-zero coefficients. So I said that actually solving this um, optimization requires a numerical solver, which we're not going to talk about, and luckily sklearn has a great facility to do everything for you. So you just run it like this. You uh, create this lasso object. You give it the level of that regularizer, call the, create the lasso object, fit it, and then predict it and score it just like you would have a linear model. In this case, there's a little bit of warnings you have to do because there's some convergence issues in this particular data set. Most times you don't have to worry about that. So we just run it and it's super fast and we get about an R squared of 90.4. It's a little higher, if you recall, than what we were getting in the unregularized model. Now, um, just to show you the solutions, what I've done in this code is I've grabbed the coefficients from the lasso and plotted them here. And then I've also plotted the um, sorted magnitude of the coefficients and compared that to it's the ridge regression solution but it's basically an unregularized or very very modestly regularized solution and you can see here that the first coefficient in the lasso is or the the highest valued coefficient is much larger but then after that it drops off quite a bit more and in fact, when you get to about coefficient 125, um, all those other remaining 50 are exactly zero. So it was able to completely discard 50, about 50 variables. Later, I'll look and show you what kind of variables were being discarded here. Whereas if you compare that to the unregularized solution, it was using, it had non-zero values for all the coefficients. And so in that sense, um, it didn't do any feature selection. Now, in this particular case, I just pulled the alpha out of a hat. In reality, we have to select alpha carefully. And as I described in the previous section, that is done with cross-validation. Again, it's really easy to do this in sklearn. They have all sorts of good tools that we can use. Um, just like it's basically doing the same as the model order selection. You can literally cut and paste that code. So what you do is you create a K fold object. I'm going to do K fold validation. And I'm going to set the number of folds to 10, but five is also a good number. We pick a range of alphas that we want to um, go over. Most people pick um, the alpha is in a logarithmic scale because you really want to get a pretty wide range of values to um, test. And then we loop over the folds 
In each fold, we get the training and test split. We fit, we do the scaling. Remember, we have to do that scaling. That's super important for any time you're doing regularized estimation. So we um, do the scaling on the X and the Y. Remember that you fit on the training data and then you apply the transform on both the training and test. And you do that for X and Y. Then you loop over all the alphas and then we just simply fit the lasso model for that alpha and then predict it on the test data and score it. And then we go um, about getting the mean and standard error across the different folds. So it's not that much code. And let's just run it. This, um, this particular uh, version will take a little bit to run in terms of time. Um, that's because the lasso is a little slower than uh, running a least squares regression, uh, but it'll complete here pretty uh, shortly. If you, there's a few tricks that you can actually make this run a little faster, but using, for example, a warm start, but they have some other issues with them. So I'm just doing it simple like this. Okay. And we're done here. Um, all the folds and all the alpha values. Let's plot our results. So on the y axis is the test or the, yes, the test r squared. And here's our alphas that we're ranging over. Now, what you see is that at the very, um, if you don't regularize it very much, it's not like you get a very bad result in this case. You get about an r squared of 0.9. But it actually improves a little as you increase the regularization. That's suggesting that what's, sorry, what's happening is that you're losing some features and that's actually good in this case because it's discarding features that are not useful. And so the test R squared goes up a little bit. Then it starts to decline as we start over regularizing, which is really the equivalent to underfitting the data. We can of course get the optimal, which is around here. And that's what this little bit of code does. And it tells us that the optimal value is about 0.4, uh, four times 10 to the three, which is right there. And our best um, test R squared is about 0.91. So we're able to explain about 91% of the variance in this if we can correctly um, identify the um, features. Um, <clears throat> we could, let's just, uh, sorry, before we go on, let's do the same plot that we did before. And we get to basically the same effect as I showed you here with this optimally selected alpha. And in this case, we see that the lasso solution selects much smaller coefficients than the unregularized solution. And about every coefficient after, say about 110, so about 60 coefficients have been discarded. Um, if you recall, we can also get something called the um, 1SE solution, or which is if we go back here, we pick not the um, alpha that maximizes the test R squared, but we try to be a little more conservative in adding features. And we pick an even smaller number of uh, features as long as it hits the test R squared within one standard deviation. So that would be about here because here's the maximum, that's the value below um, one uh, standard deviation and we would come over here. You can do that with this little bit of code here, very easy. And it shows you in this case that we, our test R squared, the average value is only a little bit lower, but we'll see that we get a little bit sparser solutions. So if we compare, um, these two values. The green line is the unregularized solution. The orange line is the um, alpha lasso solution with alpha selected with a normal rule. And the blue line is a little bit lower. It's not significantly different. 
um, with the 1SE rule. And you can see that uh, even more coefficients drop off. It's only using about 75 non-zero coefficients. So it's really knocked off almost about half the variables. Now, what I want to do, just going to interpret these results, I want to plot or print the 10 coefficients that correspond that uh, sorry the 10 the coefficients that correspond to the 10 largest um, values in the learned vector so in the ridge regression case we saw that here we have some coefficients they all sort of make sense there's things related for example with the living area um, a lot related with quality but one of the curious aspects of it was that the living area, for example, appears, but so does a highly correlated variable like the second floor square footage. Obviously, these two are extremely correlated. But when you look in the lasso case, you see that it has the overall living area, and, but it's weighted much higher. And the second floor one at least doesn't make it into this top 10 here. So it's some sense it's tried to remove redundant variables or at least weight them much lower if they're not needed. Similarly, there's a lot of quality variables in the ridge regression case and there's a little less here and a little less in the lasso case. A um, couple last things that I want to show um, <clears throat> are the following. First, I want to look through the ridge regression. Now, we used ridge regression at the beginning, in the very first section, just as a mechanism for conditioning. And I explained it just as a way to make the problem get some reasonable numbers. And what it was doing in effect was it was finding the solution of the mean squared error plus a regularization term. But the regularization term in ridge regression is the squared 2 norm. So it tends to um, pick vectors, if you recall, that are a little smaller, but um, not necessarily exactly zero. Now, at the very beginning, I just picked this alpha to be some very small number just to make it conditioned. But we could also try to optimally select alpha just like we did in the lasso case. So I'm just going to repeat that whole code. It's exactly the same excepting where I had lasso, I had ridge. In this case, the code runs a lot faster because ridge is a lot quicker to do. And we can plot the lasso and the ridge and compare them. So here is the um, lasso curve and here is the ridge curve. So there's the axes are, first of all, shifted. So the, you need a much higher level of alpha in this case. And that's just because of the way that SK learn scales alpha. There's nothing, nothing like of any real significance. Now, in the red regression case, you see somewhat the same pattern that it starts about 0.9 when it's unregularized, because when they're unregularized, the two are the same. And then it goes up, so we're, we're improving a little bit, and then it starts um, underfitting and starts going down. But you can see in this case, that the optimal or the best um, solution with ridge regression, which is about here, uh, or is a little bit lower than it is in the lasso case. So in this case, the lasso is doing better, and that makes sense in this case, not always the case, but in this case, because sparser solutions tend to actually perform a little better um, uh, in these types of models. Okay, um, one last thing I want to show is called the lasso path. And this function here, what it does is I give it a set of alphas, and then it will, for every value in the alpha, it will run that uh, fitting and store the coefficients. It's um, basically the same as what we did above. I'm just running it on the whole data set just for illustrative purposes. So let's run this. This takes a little bit of time, or at least on this Google Cloud uh, machine, but not too long. Okay, 
now that it's done, let's plot the results. I'll explain the code down here, or the plot. So the x-axis in this case is alpha, and each curve is corresponds to the coefficient found for those different alpha values. And I've done this for 10 of the top coefficients. So if you set alpha very large, in this case a value greater than about 1, what happens is that all the coefficients are 0. So it's so heavily regularized, it the lasso solver just says, oh, set everything to zero. But as you reduce alpha, it starts to get less regularized. And one coefficient at a time begins to get activated. So for example, initially, the very first one to get activated is the overall quality. And almost at the same time is the um, overall living area. These are two that you would expect to be the, probably the two most valuable if you think about what you would do if you were buying a house. Shortly after that, interestingly, is the year built because people tend to favor um, newer construction. And then the zoning, I think, uh, is the next variable and so on. So what this gives you is some kind of understanding in some ways about the relative ranking of um, variables, at least in the sense that if you were to pick a model with a limited number of features, this would tell you which features are most valuable. Put it here on the dashed line here is the alpha that was we selected with the 1SE rule. And you can see that it's quite different, the coefficients at that point to what we would have had had we waited all the way um, to the left side where we don't do any regularization. Okay, uh, with this, we're going, that wraps up the videos that I'm going to do for this unit. Um, you can get some more information on the slides, which walk through a few more examples of types of problems as well as talking about other feature selection methods. But if you finish this, you should be able to do the in-class exercise and then go on to your lab and homework.